Hi, all of you wonderful scuba divers out there. Welcome to the Scuba Diver Magazine podcast, where I break down the latest scuba diving news and things that have piqued my interest over the previous week. This week, another leak uh, for some new Apex gear that was, um, I think, just kind of put out there online and uh, an Apex, well, they, it's still not on their website, basically. Um, and an unfortunate automated message worried quite a lot of the diving industry. And this is all around uh, Paul Toomer, who, um, who was a big part of uh, the training agency Raid. And... So he was, I think he was literally on a flight heading to the um, uh, the Rebreather Forum 4 to represent the training agency Raid uh, when Raid released a, um, uh, what do you call it, like an, an announcement that he was basically leaving the um, the training agency. The press release stated that Paul had um, had resigned from the training agency that he part owns and is intensely uh, passionate about, citing personal reasons. And, of course, the entire industry was just like, what the heck is going on? And, of course, Paul couldn't, uh, like, respond to any of these, uh, these questions because he was on an aeroplane. And... Um, yeah, it was just mass confusion uh, for for a while, and um, and yeah, because he, he knew nothing about it. Of course, when he landed, um, he was like, "Oh no, that's all wrong. Um, let's set the um, set the record straight." So now, um, Dive Raid International has released another statement, uh, one which they um, no doubt hope can uh, sort of put an end to the entire confusion, and that release. It, it opens by stating automation is a wonderful thing dot 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 un, until it isn't and um and friday's release about paul tumor and raid is a classic example of what can go pear-shaped when an automatic mailing sends out a first draft instead of the final one so <clears throat> the press release uh, goes on to explain how um, Paul had been cutting back on his involvement with the day-to-day -day operations at, as, um, uh, at RAID, which we kind of knew. He, he wanted to start taking a, a step back um, since the new management te team uh, took over in January last year. And, um, and he, he basically said at like, at my age, um, in, uh, in my 50s, I, I realized that I, I just wanted to stay... stay Take a step back from things. Uh, enjoy my dives. Um, he uh, he said, I have so many dives that I want to do, so many people I want to meet, so many courses I want to help write, and of course the uh, the list goes on. So he's taking a, a step back from his position, but not leaving altogether. The release goes on to say that a few weeks ago he asked to uh, kind of get out there and do the things that he loves and uh, and what I feel uh, I'm good at, and the raid team agreed hence stepping out of his management commitments and he was moving more towards the, the training side of it. Um, however, that's where the original release certainly made it sound as if uh, Paul had just left Raid completely um, and the, the management team at the agency have scrambled to clear up all of this uh, kind of confusion and confirm that, no, he's, he's still a, uh, a member of the, the Raid team. And it states, what needs to be made clear is that whilst Paul Toomer has left his VP of product development role and is no longer tied down to an office job at the headquarters, he is still a significant and valued shareholder. He will still head up RAID's training advisory group and will continue to sit as the RAID representative on various standards groups like the Rebreather Training Council, the Recreational Scuba Training Council and ISO. Uh, most significantly, he re remains one of the agency's top instructors, a role he expects to become much more active as the time unfolds. And um, and Paul Toomer himself added a, a footnote saying, I'm, I'm still here and as bold as ever, uh, and I hope that I can help Raid bring more amazing things to the dive community through our wonderful Orange Agency. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> if you've never met Paul, he's a wonderful guy. Um, always had got a smile on his face and um, and yeah he I think just what the type of person that doesn't really do well behind a desk just kind of sat there shuffling paper so I think that's the kind of move to to, to kind of what what he's good at but yeah the um, 
the the first draft wasn't a, a good one and uh, someone must have inadvertently um sort of set it to just yeah send to all um which uh, was was a mistake um Next news story, I'm not quite sure how widespread this is, um, but it turned up on my inbox, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd let as many people know as possible, is that Scuba Pro has launched a dry suit promotion. So if you're in the market for a Scuba Pro dry suit, and I think this is a mainly UK thing, but I could be wrong, uh, so it's worth checking with your, uh, your local Scuba Pro dealer. But um, at the moment in the UK, up until the uh, July the 31st, the promotion is at participating dealers um, only. So don't get too grumpy if, you're, if your Scuba Pro dealer doesn't have this uh, 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 promotion running. But if you buy a Scuba Pro dry suit, you get a K2 undersuit for free. So this is the EverDry 4 or the XO Dry. And you get a K2 light set for free or the K2 medium set for the special price of uh, 99 British pounds. And if you get the Evertech dry breathable dry suit or the definition dry, you get the K2 extreme for free. This comes at the perfect time, just as the like British diving season is starting to kick off, it's starting to get warmer outside. Um, I've got some washing outside on the line, um, hopefully drying off. Uh, so, yeah, it's launched this dry suit promotion, which benefits if you're looking to um, uh, to transition from wetsuit to dry suit, invest in your own dry suit. But of course, you have to buy the, the undersuit at the same time. Uh, but now, hey, you can either get a, um, a, a free set or you can get a, a reduced price. Um, and this is on their, um, their range of neoprene and trilaminate dry suits. And so if you get the EverDry 4 or the Exo Dry, uh, so those are the neoprene dry suits, you choose to, you can receive a free K2 Lite set, which is a, a, a thinner undersuit because you've got the, the neoprene to, uh, to protect you or a k2 medium set for the price of 99 pounds uh where it's normally like 300 pounds as a recommended retail uh, and that's a little bit thicker or if you're going for the evertech dry breathable or the definition dry the membrane uh, dry suits you can get the k2 extreme which is it reminds me a lot of the uh, the fourth element halo 3D, uh, where it's got the, the like padded sections over the chest and over the thighs and whatnot, um, makes you look a little bit like a Power Ranger, but it's very efficient at uh, at keeping you warm, and it keeps those particular like hot spots warm because you don't need it over your entire body, but where these um, uh, the, these like extra padded sections are is really what's keeping you warm and it's important to uh, to have that in uh, insulation over you so um yeah the, uh, this is up until the uh, the end of july so you've got a few months to um uh, to to check it out and um yeah if you're in the market for a new dry suit uh check out scuba pro uh but yeah i think this it mainly seems to be a, a british thing uh it's hard for me to find out. I don't actually have a VPN to uh, to play about and try different regions, uh, so they might have different things. It's this is quite common to, um, for the manufacturers and uh, and dive centres to run different promotions in different areas because not all diving areas are uh, are the same. We're looking for uh, for different things. Uh, but yeah, if if you're a UK diver, ooh, my dog's just woken up um if you're a uk diver and you're um you're looking about getting into uh, dry suit diving this could save you a pretty penny um sticking with exposure protection another interesting thing that uh, that caught my eye is that a shark biologist has launched australia's first wetsuit brand which is exclusively for female divers and snorkelers so this is a huge thing in I, i'm seeing it more and more and uh, and i've spoken to um Oh, Sarah from uh, from girls that um, uh, girls that scuba, and um, yeah, where they're forever asking for like, like women's wetsuits that actually fit and they're comfortable, um, but they're also like pretty as well. They're not just black, um, and yeah, Amanda Elizabeth 
a Perth-based shark biologist, has launched a bright, bold, and unapologetic wetsuit brand for women called Bold. So this is B-O-L-D-E. And her wetsuits are made specifically for divers and snorkelers with a um, uh, the current range including a jacket, spring suit, and a steamer. So you get a range of different uh, like wetsuit designs, as it were. Uh, spring suit usually means it just doesn't have legs, but you have uh, like full arm coverage. And, uh, and steamer is just a, a full body. All of the wetsuits are made from premium Japanese limestone-based neoprene, which I imagine is Yamamoto. Uh, that's the only premium Japanese limestone-based neoprene that I'm aware of. Uh, it could be others because it doesn't specifically name Yamamoto in this article. Um, but I imagine that's what it is, but I've been wrong before. Um, it's it's a more environmentally friendly option to the traditional petroleum-based neoprene, and some divers find it a bit more hypoallergenic because they don't use the same uh, like chemicals and stuff in the manufacturing process, uh, but it's still neoprene and it tends to be very flexible as well. And they also make a mask and snorkel set, uh, and they're aiming to uh, release more accessories going going forward so like a real like proper diving brand having spent a lot of time in the water amanda knows the way that a wetsuit should feel and how she needs to move in the water but she found that too many wetsuits just didn't fit her properly because they're usually just like unisex wetsuits which doesn't really work and she couldn't find a wetsuit that she was excited to wear uh one that was bright, bold, and reflected her personality. So she thought, why, why can't a wetsuit be functional and stylish? Uh, one that looks great in and out of the water. So Amanda created her own colourful wetsuit designs. Uh, they got very uh, like blue nautical um, patterns to them. And yeah, they're tailored specifically to a woman's body shape. And, uh, and she says that our wetsuits are designed specifically for women by women. And... Um, and this really does follow the rise in um, like the statistics. We're seeing a rise in women uh, participating in this like quite male dominated scuba diving uh, activity. Uh, but the wetsuit industry hasn't quite kept up with those changes. Sure, you can find women's wetsuits out there, but they're still fairly, oh yeah. some manufacturers do better than others. Um, but for example, uh, in 2011, looking at these statistics, women only made up around 20% of scuba divers, so just one in five, uh, which I feel was almost a bit high based on um, sort of looking around at some of the other uh, dive boats that I was diving on. But by 2021, this number had risen to over 30%, so about one in three. Um, and yeah, you are starting to see more female divers um, out on uh, out on dive boats so um so yeah bold was created to really empower women who are uh, sort of now pushing the boundaries and joining in a bit more and uh, and challenging the status quo by doing what once were male dominated water activities um if you head over to um uh, bold wetsuits on their uh, instagram it's at bold with an e wetsuits uh you can check them out uh yeah so really sort of bright, vibrant colours, and um, yeah, I, I do see that quite a lot when um, when people are talking about wetsuits, and like, oh, of course, it's another black wetsuit, which I know is a very safe choice, but hey, if, um, if people want more colour, then yeah, you need to be investing in these, like, new brands to uh, to show your, your interest, because if it doesn't sell, then yeah, it's just going back to the standard black. Yeah, otherwise, uh, this popped up, I think I first saw it on Instagram, um, someone was advertising the Apex VX2 mask, and it's very reminiscent of the Aqualung Technica, if you remember that, it had that, uh, that metal frame and it still had the exposed bolts on the, uh, on the front, and this is like a, an Apex version of that, so... It's, it's being sold as a lightweight and extremely durable mask. It has a stainless steel like front face and it's a, um, oh, I want to say carbon fiber, um, like the rest of the frame. And 
it's kind of like the the best of both worlds. And they're saying that it weighs, oh, I think it was like 32 grams more than the uh, the VX1. So even though it's got this stainless steel metal frame, it's it's not it's not a heavy bulky mask. Um, so uh, so yeah, and, and that just kind of just kind of snuck out. And um, so I thought, oh okay, yep, head over to uh, to the Apex website, check it out. It's not on there yet. I'm like, oh okay, and it's on a few websites out there. Um, and yeah, looks like a. It reminds me of the Technica, with that uh, with that frame and the exposed bolts. They look like torque um, uh, torque bolts, and I don't think it's going to be um, disassemblable. Because um, that was one thing with the um, uh, with the Technica, or a lot of divers assumed because you can see the hardware that holds it all together. Oh, okay. Does that mean that I can disassemble it to uh, to clean it and to swap the lenses out if I need uh, prescription lenses or something? No, you couldn't do that with the uh, with the Technica. Uh, you could undo the bolts, but I don't think it was uh, it was worth it. It's not made to be disassembled, and so far I haven't seen anywhere on the uh, the Apex VX2 that suggests that it can be um, disassembled. Um, what do they say about it? So the VX2 mask is lightweight, extremely durable, and the VX2 mask withstands the demanding conditions of the dive environment with superb fit and comfort. VX2 mask molds to the face and reduces leakage. Uh, exceptional optical performance with no distortion delivers improved visibility and superb clarity. Extremely durable, strong, lightweight mask, stainless steel outer frame, and a carbon fiber filled inner frame. They say it has an increased field of vision of 13% compared to the Apex VX1 mask. Uh, superb fit and comfort through a combination of matte and gloss areas on the silicone skirt. Um, anything else? Easy adjustable buckles, pure clear lenses, um, supplied with an additional neoprene mask strap for a secure and comfortable fit, much like the uh, the VX1, uh, premium zipped EVA reusable protective case and plastic free packaging. Uh, so yeah, uh, Apex have a a second mask design. Uh, they've um, they've got quite a few VX1s that comes in. Gorgeous truth, seven or eight different colors now. Uh, but yeah, now we've got the uh, the VX2, uh, which I wasn't really expecting. I um, I hadn't heard a, um, a a whiff of it, and uh, then all of a sudden it was just like boom! It's it's up for sale. It's online. Um, head head over. Um, the other one I was having a look at scuba.com, and they've got a new Aqualung Axiom i3 BCD, and the thing that really stood out to me. I've seen the uh, the Axiom and a few different colorways in my uh, in my generations, and this one it's mostly black, but all of the webbing is like a bright red, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I've never seen uh, it's like anything like this in a in a scuba BCD, and I kind of like it. It's got some um, like high vis yellow details in it, but very little. It's only in the I three. Uh, like stitching and the um, and the inflator toggle. Otherwise, it's mostly black, and then you get this striking red on the uh, on the webbing. Uh, I I just think it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, just check that out. That's on uh, yeah scuba dot com, um, and that's about it as far as equipment goes. Oh no, there was the um, uh, uh, dive right Nomad Ray, uh, a side mount BCD by the looks of it. And um, yeah, just slightly different. It's got a kind of, um, oh, what kind of shape is that? Is that a trapezoid? Uh, almost diamond, but diamond with like a like flattened top and bottom. And it looks like it's got a um, uh, abrasion resistance like topper down the spine to protect the, um, uh, the bladder inside. And um, yeah, um, that that was the, another thing that I think was released uh, last week, and um, yeah, just just caught my eye. Otherwise, that's about it. Um, this week, I've been I've been preparing for a, uh, a course. I've got a two week course 
um, over the next couple of weeks. So you're not going to get a podcast next week or the week after. Uh, so it's going to be like the second weekend of May um, that you're going to get a, a podcast again. And some of the videos might be broken up a little bit. Um, I did change the release schedule to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, a couple of weeks back, uh, as well as Saturday, Sunday. Um, but the, the Saturday, Sunday videos might just be arse marks, uh, cause I've got a few of them, um, behind the scenes and yeah, I'm, I'm literally going to be on a boat for like two weeks. So I'm not going to have, uh, the ability to make any, um, uh, like top 10 videos. I've done my best, but I think I've got enough videos to, um, uh, to tide me over the, uh, the two week course, but yeah, things might be a little bit different, uh, for the next couple of weeks. Um, as far as Ask Mark questions that I have been uh, recording this week, uh, one was about a, um, a pony setups, whether it's better to put it on your back, like mounted to your cylinder or to side mount it. And that's very much down to like flexibility because it's pros and cons on both sides. And it kind of depend, depends what's more beneficial to you as a diver with side mount the the cylinder is clipped onto d-rings on your uh, on your left hand side and that's good for flexibility both in and out of the water because uh, for example if you've got a bad back or something and um and you're feeling a little bit delicate and you uh, you don't want to carry all of that weight out of the water on your back and your knees then you can lower the side mounted cylinder into the water, attach it onto a rope or something, and then get into the water with the rest of your gear, swim over to it, unattach it, and then attach it onto yourself. So you never have to actually carry that weight on, on your shoulders and your back and your knees. And also in the water, if you need to, you can take it off and you can do something with it. Um, give it to another diver or clip it off onto onto something. So it is a bit more flexible, whereas back mounted, it's more rigid. So it's, it's like physically attached to your cylinder behind you. It's normally done with some kind of quick release mechanism, but still it's an extra mechanism and it's literally on your back. So it's harder to reach, which some divers prefer that it's it physically moves with you, but it's still accessible. Uh, but yeah, it just means that you do have to uh, like pick it up and carry it along with the uh, the rest of your dive gear. So yeah, is is eh, diver's choice really? Um, most of mine are uh, are side mounted now. I mean, I literally have twin cylinders, so there's two of them uh, side by side. So that's almost like a having a giant pony uh, attached onto your back. But I'll still dive with um, uh, with a redundant uh, like uh, like cylinder on my uh, on my left hand side as well. Someone was also asking about the Apex Thermic uh, dry suits because they got two new dry suits that uh, that they released. Uh, I think it was late last year. Uh, the Thermic and the Thermic Advanced, um, and yeah, good looking uh, front entry membrane dry suits. Uh, I think the only things that were particularly of note comparing them to uh, to other dry suits are that they have like a Kevlar weave on the bottom of the socks, so a bit tougher socks compared to some dry suits, and um, they they've got nice pockets as well, which are really good. They're very similar to the uh, the fourth element pockets, which I tend to prefer. I find they're one of the uh, the better um, thigh pockets out there, and um, the I think it's just the regular. So the regular thermic is breathable, but the advanced has a bit more um, ugh, like abrasion resistant patches where the dry suit needs to be a bit more abrasion resistant. Uh, and the uh, the third ask mark question was um, uh, was about necklaces on on second stages and and which second stage should you put it in a a more traditional standard regulator setup and it's typically on the shortest hose or the, or the second stage on the shortest hose because if you put it on your octo whatever one that you is on a long hose and you donate to your buddy if that's stuck in a necklace around your neck then you can't donate it 
I mean, you can, it's just not as easy. Um, whereas if it's on the short hose, that's the one that you traditionally go to if whatever you're breathing from is knocked out of your mouth. So um, yeah, as just a, a simple answer, if you've got a, a second stage on a shorter hose, it goes on that one, basically. And um, and yeah, that, that was it. Um, yeah, m most of this week is just like preparing for um, for these two weeks, uh, for this two week course. Um, so, um, so yeah, I've been, been kind of busy getting ready for all of that. But um, yeah, I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, any other interesting news stories, head over to scubadivermag.com. We try and keep on top of all of the, uh, the latest news. Uh, any questions, pop them down in the comments section of any of the uh, our YouTube videos. And, uh, and if you want me to discuss it, uh, use that Ask Mark hashtag. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, whatever it is, depending on what um, uh, platform you're listening to us on. Thank you very much for listening, everybody. And of course, safe diving.